Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the draw tight trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Chevy Equinox. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed on your Equinox and the great part is this is a hidden cross tube so the only thing that you're going to see hanging down from the bottom of the vehicle is the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and that's really nice because being the two inch uh, means that it's pretty universal so you're going to have plenty of options when it comes to cargo carriers bike racks or ball mounts now all of those are going to stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip and that is not included with the hitch a lot of your accessories will come with one um, which is really nice to have but if you you want to pick up a locking version those are really great too because you can put those in place put your accessories in lock them and no one's going to walk away with them you can check out eTrailer.com for some of those now if you're planning on pulling a trailer you do have some easy accessible safety chain loops so a standard s hook works great larger clevis style is even going to work well on here now speaking of towing this is rated at a gross trailer weight rating of four uh, 4,500 pounds, which is going to be the weight of the trailer, plus the accessories loaded up. You also have a tongue weight rating of 675 pounds, which is the downward pressure that's put on the receiver tube opening. So that's going to be a lot of your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. At 675, that's pretty high, so it's going to be really hard to overload that. And as far as towing goes, you're going to want to make sure to check the vehicle's owner's manual. And that way you can compare that with the numbers on the hitch. Take the lowest of those two, that way you're not overloading it and you're going to stay safe. Now they can be used with a weight distribution hitch, but those numbers are going to stay the same. Now when choosing accessories that fold up or even a ball mount to make sure that you have clearance for your trailer, you're going to want to measure from the center of the hitch pin uh, and take that measurement at five inches and take that into account when choosing accessories. We also have a ground clearance here from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground of 11 inches. Again, that's going to help you determine if you need a rise or a drop for a ball mount, but also it's going to kind of let you know that you do have just a little bit of ground clearance here. So your suspended accessories like a cargo carrier or bike rack, as that kind of extends the vehicle as you go up an incline, that does have the chance to make contact with the ground. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're out driving and you see an incline coming up, you don't want to damage your accessories. Now, as far as getting this installed on your vehicle, this one's pretty straightforward. It can go uh, pretty easily on your driveway or in your garage. And I would say maybe about an hour, a little bit more if you need. Um, but mostly it's just going to be dropping down the exhaust a little bit so we can get our hitch up in place and then routing some hardware so it's not too bad and if you follow along with the video we'll make sure that you get yours installed so let's take a look to begin our installation we're going to be underneath our rear fascia here and there's going to be two t15 torx bits that attach to a bracket and that's going to allow us to uh, open up our bumper a little bit more to get our exhaust to drop down so go ahead with your t15 and take these two off and throughout the installation, there is going to be some more hardware that we're going to be taking off. So just make sure you have a nice organized spot for your hardware. It's going to make reinstallation a lot easier. Next, we're going to need to lower down our exhaust isolator bracket. So if you look underneath, you're going to see the two studs going through here. And it's going to be a 15 millimeter socket to get that. Now I recommend having a swivel head uh, ratchet. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. Uh, so just kind of reach up there. You'll feel both of them and we'll get those loosened up and taken out. Now you should also be able to get a, a ratcheting wrench in here. Um, you can, you can kind of have this nice open pocket to be able to gain access. So whatever works best, uh, just go ahead and get these two taken out and repeat that on the other side. Now we should be able to remove our brackets here. Uh, it's got this little tab that kind of slides in and it looks like my exhaust isolator has uh, been separated here from the factory. So uh, yours, you may just need to move out, uh, but the main thing is we're gonna need to uh, get our exhaust here to kind of lower down to give us space. So you can go ahead and take these out. Now with those brackets off, if you are struggling with it, anytime you're uh, doing any isolator exhaust work, those rubber, uh, hangers can get a little bit kind of built up with stuff and they can get a little bit tricky to pop off. So you can use a soapy water solution or a penetrating oil and that's just gonna kind of help lubricate those off. And we're gonna be doing that here on our hanger that we have in the middle of our cross member. So uh, this is gonna allow this to drop down, but we do need to support our exhaust. We don't want this just uh, bending downstream. So if you're doing this in your garage or your driveway, just have a block of wood or something that it's not just gonna free hang. Since I'm on a lift here, I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap to just kind of create a cradle here. 
And this isolator, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to put a little bit of penetrating oil. And you can use, if you have a pry bar, um, that's definitely the uh, most preferred method, but a flathead's going to work kind of the same. Um, so just kind of get a point of leverage and then just kind of work this back. And until you get this to pop off, should be pretty easy here. So with that isolator off, you can see our exhaust kind of hanging. I'm just going to kind of get our cradle a little bit tighter here just to support it. And this is going to give us that clearance to be able to get that hitch up in place. Now this is when taking those T15 Torx bits can, comes into play. Uh, this is going to allow us to kind of peel back our fascia enough to get our hangers here past the plastic and that way we can get our hitch to slide up in between them and bolt up to our frame. To create a mounting spot on the frame of our vehicle, we're going to be using a carriage bolt and a spacer block and feeding this up into the frame rail with a fish wire. We're going to start on this furthest hole and feed it back towards the larger access hole. And if you need to put a bend on the wire to make it a little bit easier to fish this back to you, you can absolutely do that. But reach for that coiled section and then pull it through the access hole just like that. And if you need to, you can put a small bend on the tail end of the wire and that way it's not going to pull through the hole and it kind of helps also when you feed it uh, through the hitch as well. And you're going to take your spacer block and you can feed this up in the frame rail. And on the coiled section here we'll just thread on our carriage bolt. And then feed this up into the frame rail as well. And as we pull this wire it should drop into place. You may need to wiggle a little bit. Now once we're at this spot, we can go ahead and leave the fish wire on here. It's going to help installation of the hitch. Um, we're just going to repeat the same process for this hole as well as this hole. And then it'll also be the same on the other side. So go ahead and get all your hardware in place. So at this point, grab an extra set of hands. I have Aiden helping me here. And you're going to want to have at least one set of hardware ready on each side. So we have a conical tooth washer. And the teeth on the washer need to bite into the metal on the hitch. So make sure you have it facing the proper way. And then also a nut to get this started. And the main goal is to get one started on each side so it's supporting itself, making it a little bit easier to get our hitch installed. So what we'll do is we're going to slide this over the muffler. And uh, we may need to kind of pull it down a little bit to get it in place. And then at this point, what you're going to do is take your fish wires and feed them through the corresponding wires. And having this little bend on the end means that I can kind of just slide this in there. And it's going to hold that wire in place, making it a little bit easier. So do that with the rest of the wires. And then as we slide our hitch up, just make sure that those studs kind of pull through. And that's where those fish wires can kind of help. And then I'm going to just pull off one of the fish wires, whichever one you want. Be careful, it kind of can snap your knuckles there. Uh, and then we'll get our conical tooth washer started. And this will kind of help. You can take that washer and put pressure against that bolt so it doesn't push up as you're threading the nut on. And then once we have one starter on each side, this will kind of be hands-free and allow us to get the rest of the hardware in. So go ahead and do that now. With all of our hardware uh, just kind of hand started on here, we're going to go ahead and tighten all these down using 11 16 socket. Now with the torque setting found in the instruction manual, we're going to set our torque wrench to that with that same socket and go through and torque them all down properly. And this is going to be an important step. It's going to make sure that these are going to be tight enough to hold for the lifespan of the hitch, but also it's not going to be too tight, causing stress on the threads. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. Generally, you can go to an auto parts store and rent one as well. We'll go through and just torque the remainder of our hardware. Now that our hitch is officially bolted in place, we just need to get everything back in. So get your exhaust plugged back into the brackets as well as your rubber isolator put back on. We're also going to get our T15 screws back in and that's really going to do it for the install of the hitch. Now with everything back in place, all that's left to do is load up your accessories and start using your hitch. And that was a look at installation of the Draw Tight Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2023 Chevrolet Equinox.